people are really excited to be here. Yeah. How many people are the most excited they have been all week to be here? Oh, let me hear it. Hallelujah. That's now you're coming. Okay, I'm going to read a little portion of scripture here before we get going this morning. We are so blessed to have uh, Prophet Dale with us. And I just encourage you, urge you uh, to dig in. Dig into every word and make every opportunity um, just to just to hear what the prophet would say to us this week. Amen. Uh, Psalm 103, I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version because I just love, you know, I'm kind of a dramatic person. I just love how dramatic the Amplified Version is. It says, Bless affectionately, gratefully, praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deepest within me. Bless his holy name. Bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of all of his benefits, who forgives every one of your, every one of your, all of your iniquities, who heals each one of all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and corruption, who beautifies, dignifies, and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth, your necessity, and desire at your personal age and situation, with good so that your youth renewed is like the eagles, strong, overcoming, and soaring. Amen. Do you feel this morning like you are strong, overcoming, and soaring? Yes, How many people here this morning are strong, overcoming, and soaring? Yes. Say it after me. I am strong. I am soaring. I am overcoming. Thank you, Lord, that they will believe that before the service is over. In Jesus' name. We're going to worship for a bit now. Now, we're not doing the go-around shaking hands thing anymore. Um, you're free after services or whatever if you want to greet somebody. But we're just going to eliminate that to save some time. And I'm going to stop talking now to save some time, too. We shall come because I tend to forget that one, so this morning I wrote it in big letters. Let's stand this morning. We're gonna speak to the north, the east, the south, and the west. They're gonna give them up. This place is gonna be filled with believers.
Amen. Amen. God Amen. is good. God Amen. is good all the time. Amen. I'd like to yes, he is. welcome Pastor Dale Pepe. <laughs> Papa Dale Pepe. Yeah. Well, I'm Pastor. Hallelujah. You know, I'm sitting there in between them. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I got this whole shirt. I got this whole pair of jeans. And here I am. See, two, I'm in between two oh, well dressed men. Amen. 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 Someday I'm going to grow up and be like them. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. But anyways, we're expecting God to do some great things here today. Amen. Yes. Amen. Keep your heart open. Pray at the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Give me revelation knowledge. Open my ears. I hear Hallelujah. what the Holy Spirit is saying. Amen. We'll come through every time, every time. Amen. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Amen.
it says in uh, chapter chapter uh, six that uh, when Jesus had gone into his own hometown, it says that uh, uh, they wanted him to. He said, "Do some miracles, you know, just prove prove who you say you are." But it says in verse five, and he could do no mighty works. And he says that he marveled because of their unbelief. You see, what happens here today can happen or won't happen. It's up to us. It's not so much up to God. It's up to us. If there was a place of faith, God will move. Amen. Okay? God will move, will move in this yes. place. Brother Begley, I've known Brother Begley for a, a very long time. Uh, I think 30-some years now. And I've traveled halfway around the world with him. And uh, he has spoken into my life numerous, numerous times. And uh, he has uh, been accurate, extremely accurate in, uh, in what he has spoken in my life. And so I pay attention. I pay attention when he is ministering and speaking. And uh, uh, I believe we've got some, some awesome things. He was uh, he's so excited uh, about being here. And I think he's excited to be anywhere, but uh, especially with us. <laughs> he's here uh, this morning. And uh, I believe he really has something special. I mean, every time he comes, it's always special. But <clears throat> I believe that <clears throat> God has some, some uh, uh, exceptionally special things for us this morning. Do you believe that? Yeah. I, I, I not only respect, I honor the office of the prophet. You know, there's apostle, prophets, evangelist, pastor, teachers, and we do, we do respect these things. Uh, and I do... Uh, I, Count uh, Brother Dale as a, as a great, great friend, and uh, uh, but I also I respect the office that he stands. And like I said, he has told, over the years, over thirty years, he has told me things uh, concerning what was coming in my life, and it was always, always accurate. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm still waiting on that million dollars, so but uh, <laughs> I believe it's on the way to. Brother Becky, we're going to turn this over to you. Amen. Are you ready? Are you sure? I mean, uh, just stretch your hands up towards <coughs> Brother Begley this morning. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the prophet. We thank you for the prophet's ministry. We thank you, Lord, that the things that he will say and share and do, Lord, will glorify you. And that's your plan for what you have planned for us. You, you've been planning this this day, these services from the foundation of the world. And so, Lord, you've got the ones that need to be here. They're here. And, Lord, that we are not filled with unbelief, but we are filled with faith. And we are here to receive all that heaven has in this place for us this morning and tonight and the next uh, uh, night throughout the week. And so we trust you. We trust you. We trust that Brother Dale will obey the Holy Ghost. Those slightest of impressions, Lord, he'll act upon those things. And Lord, that you'll release great power, great anointing. Father, he'll see. He's a seer. He'll see deeper than he's seen before. He'll prophesy greater things than he's prophesied before. He'll dream greater dreams than he's ever dreamed before and he'll act out those things by faith and we'll receive it in Jesus name everybody said Amen. Amen. praise the Lord <coughs> don't, don't run off just yet praise the Lord praise God thank you Father uh. came to me in a dream two, about two months ago. He said that 10,000 
several years ago, I think uh, Brother Greg had a meeting in McAllister to honor Brother Bagley. The Lord said uh, <coughs> to me, clear your schedule, go there, and take you a lot of money. So I did that. Today, I'm going to preach on honor. I have, the Lord said, be transparent and demonstrate the spirit of giving. So here's five for the church. I began to believe God for the 10,000. And so the Lord has taught me that there's a higher level of giving that we haven't tapped into. Most of our giving is still on human level. And he wants to bring the whole church up to supernatural increase. And I didn't, I didn't fully understand it. He would get to eliminate some things to me. And so in the process of time, I'm uh, believing God for an extra 10000 yes. So I set up some meetings, <coughs> went to a little church out in the country, preached one service. I'm believing to be able to sow. The offering now is fourteen thousand. What that's gonna do? It's ten thousand American. And so the Lord said, uh, "I wouldn't believe it for me." See, the Scripture talks about He provides seed for the sower. The sower is not only just believing for his own, but he's believing for enough to be able to sow. Yeah. It's a whole other level. And so I wanted to honor a pastor today. Praise God. He's one of the finest men I've ever met. One of the most generous men I've ever met. And I don't think people in this community have any idea who no. walks alone. No. But Jesus was the same way. They had no idea who walked among them. So today we honor our pastor. Yes. Yes. And we honor this church. Yes. Would you lift your hands and praise the Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you. Yes. We thank you for a supernatural increase yes. upon his life, yes. upon this church, yes. upon this ministry. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you have trained this man for years for this time. Father, I thank you that you have helped us and trained us for such a time as this. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may go now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, oh. Glory. <laughs> Glory. Let me give my tongue look back up to my spirit. <laughs> Cash the cosas on the baby, Ash the tower baba tala kishi tele, Fasul Sondaningalana Mama Mandane. For I should introduce new revelation, a greater revelation than you've ever known. Yes. It will cause you to mature and become full grown. Mm. For yes, there's turmoil and fire in the world, yes. but you're not there. You live in God's kingdom where there is no care. You live in God's kingdom where he's able to share. This wealth transfer shall flow to you. It shall flow to you. As by perfect will you continue to pursue. These means this time is a divine time. 
a different kind of flow. I'll teach you about a secret place that I want you to go. Into a trance. Into a trance. It's beyond the shouting. It's beyond the dance. It's ecstasy unknown to mankind in many ways. But while you're in the trance, I will display to you my perfected ways. So receive this week such, such, such truth shall flow. And you shall have a blessing every place you go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody said amen. 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 Well, I, I've been waiting for this time for about two weeks, three weeks, three months. So I'm about ready to blow up. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Glory, glory, glory. If I ask the common Joe on the street, how does God help you? If I ask the common uh, say, how does God help you? They say, well, he'll put a song in your heart. The way God helps you is he gets a preacher across your path to preach to you. Amen. Paul, quoting the Ephesians, he that descended also ascended, gave gifts unto men to equip the saints. He's quoting Psalm 68. In Psalm 68, it says this He that descended also ascended and gave gifts unto men that he might live amongst us. The, the pastoral gift in Brother Whiteley is Christ living amongst you. The prophetic gift in me is Christ living amongst you. That's reality. In Exodus 25, he said, I love my people so much. Build me a box that I may dwell with them. God loves us so much, he puts himself in people to dwell amongst us. What is preaching for? To change the way you think the way you act and the way you talk. It affects your choices. There's many people that should be here. But because of a lack of honor. See, you'll never be offended at anybody you honor. Amen. Amen. The world and our culture has become so debased and so lack of honor. Amen. Yeah. But the spirit of the world has crept into the church mm. to where they get familiar. I want to highlight the word familiar. Familiarity breeds contempt. Familiarity causes ease and to relax and to think God's things are common. The gift of God is not common. The gift of God is not anything to do with God. We should stand in awe. Uh, Amen. Amen. Well, that's just Brother Dale. He's just like a Western. You've seen the one, you've seen them all. <laughs> we get familiar. Yeah. Yeah. We get familiar with the Word. Yeah. It doesn't carry the, the impact it should. So we're going to connect the dots today between honor reverence and the fear of the Lord. Honor is a fixed value. Honor is a fixed value. Nobody goes home and throws their jewelry in the floor. They put it in a jewelry case because they have fixed value. You know how blessed you are to have a word of faith, tongue-talking, God-fearing, sin-killing, preaching, in your community. Yeah. Yeah. There's hundreds of communities that don't have this. Right. The Lord recently told me, he said, I want you to double down on the word of faith message. He said, this generation has almost lost it. Almost lost it. See, truth doesn't change. That's right. That's right. Amen. People Amen. change. Yeah. Culture Amen. change. Yeah. But truth doesn't change. That's right. Amen. So we're going to go to Samuel chapter 2, verse 29. Now, now here's, here's what I want you to understand. Oftentimes, people operate in dishonor 
and they don't even know it. Dad Hagen, my father in the faith, said this. He said, when honor and reverence is restored back to the church, you'll see an increase in power and miracles and signs and wonders. Give an emphasis that it's been lost. I'm pre-charismatic. What's that? Prehistoric? No, free charismatic. <laughs> I remember when the casual came in. Yeah. I remember when people started wearing whatever they wanted to wear. Even come to church in pajamas. <clears throat> I preached recently in a church, and there's a little dog running around. Two million dollar building and a little dog running around. You, you don't let a little dog run around in church. No. Well, he, he's my comfort dog. Yes. No, the Holy Ghost is a comfort, not a dog. That's right. Amen. So what Amen. is honor good for? It sets boundaries. Mm -hmm. Honor is safety. Mm -hmm. Honor is protection. Yes. The first commandment with promise is to honor your father and your mother. Amen. That you may live long for the earth. <laughs> and things may go well with thee. Mm -hmm. A lot of people die young because of lack of honor. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. don't even know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things go troublesome in the earth. Doesn't go well. It's a lack of honor. See, honor is just something, something you just do one time. It's something you practice and you practice and you practice. And you're honorable regardless of how Anybody else says. I went to one church and I said, I didn't come here for the money. Well, they proved me right. <laughs> we call offerings honorariums. Honorariums. We call judges your honor. We call preachers reverend. These are things that have been lost because we're so familiar. Why teach your children to honor you, the parent? Well, if they have honor for their parent when they're 16 years old, they won't sneak out at midnight and go drag racing and wind up in a car and get killed. Yep, that's right. If you live long enough, I've seen that happen. I've seen young girls slip out at night and go somewhere with a bunch of boys and, and get killed and they want to blame God for it. No, it's a lack of honor. Yeah. It's a lack of honor. See, my daddy was my daddy, but he was also a father. <laughs> One definition of, of honor is <sighs> be in awe of him. <laughs> that's, that's been lost. Too much casualness. Too much coming in late whatsoever. Amen. And it has robbed us. In this city here, they kicked against the offerings. They, they treated them with disrespect. Eli was the phrase. He didn't. He didn't correct his sons. A lack of correction. You would think people would love correction, yet many abhor it. Correction is a love flow. Whom he loves, he corrects. If, if we're to do the job that God's called to do. We're going to have to develop skill and precision, learning to cooperate with God. In a service, there's three players. There's God's part, the preacher's part, and your part. It's not just hearing, but it's applying it to our life. We begin to practice honor and honor and honor. So here in this situation, the Philistines has been able to steal the Ark of the Covenant. Steal the presence of God. In so many churches, the honor is not there and neither is the presence of God. Amen. See, God is present everywhere, but he's not in manifestation everywhere. And so Eli wouldn't correct his son. God said, you're going to be priest in perpetuity. Your sons, your son's sons, and your son's son from now on. But he said, now that you have trampled down the offering to disrespected me, he said, whoever, you, if you honor me, I will honor you. Verse 30. If you <laughs> honor me, I will honor you. It's a matter of sowing and reaping. See, I'm going to be gracious whether you are or not. Amen. I'm going to be honorable whether you are or not. 
I want to be gracious and honorable when nobody's around. Amen. Amen. Nobody's looking. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> so Air Canada, <laughs> flying in from Montreal, <laughs> offered me three glasses of wine. <laughs> they will say, take you a shot. Nobody will know. But I would know. Amen. Yeah, for, Come on, somebody. Amen. Yeah. That's just an example. I'm going to drink wine if they gave it to me. But they wanted to. But anyhow. So honor is a, a character that's developed in an individual when nobody's looking but you. And so here you are. He said, you won't, you won't live long now. He said, because you hadn't honored me and you despise me and think my things are tripping. And see, people do this all the time. I've been in churches when they say, well, let's just take the offering and get it out of the way. Well, they say, take your song and get it out of the way. Take your preaching and get it out of the way. Offering, you see, it's not about money. Tithing is not about money. Tithing is about honor. It's about putting him first yes. in money, putting him first in the word, putting him first in the spirit. Amen. It's a practice, but it's linked to longevity. It's linked to your prosperity. It's linked to things going well upon the earth. So he said, I promise you long life and your children long life, but now since you disrespected me, he said, your two sons will die in one day. Nobody will live long in your house. And you will sit and see everybody else's prosperity and be envious. And you'll wind up being beggars. What? Do you know a big part of the church world preachers are beggars? Because they don't know how to honor God. See, my, my, my living is my giving. I'm not, I'm not making fun, not picking on anybody. I'm just trying to tell you we have stepped down and sold peanut brittle and sold pies, quilts, instead of doing it God's way and planting a seed and believe, then receive and plant another seed and a bigger seed and a bigger seed and a bigger seed. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I remember when Norval Hayes gave Kenneth Hagin 10000 I remember when Jesse the Finest gave Brother Hagin 10000 I thought, Lord, I would love to do that. He said, there'll be a day. There'll be a day I'll give 100000 There'll be a day, he said, if I do this, he'll make me a multi-meter. I said, uh-huh. <laughs> you have a deal? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. The whole reason he wants you blessed is so you can be a blessing. Yes. So here we have, we have this promise naked by their actions, a lack of honor. Yeah. And so I just want to preach Paul. Is that all right for everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus was the best on the earth. Yes. Some would say, if Judas had a better friend, maybe he would have actually. If Judas had a better pastor, you can't get any better than Jesus. That's right, brother. Yeah. Brother Hagin used to say, oftentimes, God gets less done than 20% what he wants to do in a sermon. He said, a good service, sometimes 50%. I think he said, the best he ever did was 70. He said, because the whole body, God, the preacher, and the people had to be operated as one. But he also prophesied, he said, in the last day before the Lord come, we'll go 100%. Amen. Every ministry shall flow. Amen. One, come on, somebody that's hungry. Amen. The hunger has to retain I'm quoting him again. He said, uh, he says, not prayer and fasting that break miracles. You would think it would. No. It's not prayer and fasting. It's hunger. Yeah. It's hunger. How hungry. I'm more hungry for God now than I have been in my life. More dedicated. Yes. Y'all don't get out much, do you? <laughs> Brother Hagin also said there's enough power in every sick room, every hospital room. To heal that person, deliver that person. Yeah. It's that big faith and action with it. So God's power is everywhere. Yeah. So let's jump over to Luke chapter 5, verse 17. Here in Jesus' own house, his own house, the Bible said the power of the Lord was present to heal. The power is hanging in the air. It's right there. There's people in the house from every city, 
Judea, Samaria, so forth. This is Jesus' own house. Power was present to heal them. Now here's the best. The best apostle. The best evangelist. If there's only a hundred there, there's probably close to a thousand. If there's only a hundred there, he got one healed. So Jesus, the best, is batting one percent. One percent. One percent. So we jump over to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He said, I'm anointed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. To heal, set the captives free. Guess what? Nobody got anything. Here he's batting zero. Over there he got one percent. Over here, zero. I visited that church. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus preaching, I copied him. He had several closings. <laughs> <laughs> so he closed them up. And I'll tell y'all right now, this scripture is fulfilling yours right now. Mm -hmm. Didn't none of y'all get anything. Mm -hmm. He said, there were many witnesses in the day of Elijah. Mm -hmm. Did God love all witnesses? Yeah. <laughs> does God love all people? Yeah. He does. Yeah. Can, can he help yeah. all people? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not unless they believe. Yeah. So everybody is not on an equal plane in a sense. It's according to your faith you receive. Yes. Here's what I want to give you. The anointing you honor is the anointing you participate in and you receive from. What anointing did the widow woman tap into with Elijah? What did he carry? He carried a never-go-hungry anointing. Even the birds say. Even when he was running from the Avon lady, I mean Jezebel. <laughs> an angel appeared and cooked him an angel food cake. Yes. He carried a never go hungry anointing. She tapped into that while the other widows starved to death. So you can be blessed in the middle of chaos when everybody else is doing it out. I have preachers get mad at me because I'm not struggling. See, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. If serving God is hard for you, it's always a lack of wisdom. Yeah. Always. He said, come learn of me. My yoke is easy. See, learn of me. Develop skill in how to cooperate with what he's doing. She was the only widow that cooperated. She's the only one who got blessed and was fed through the famine. God will take care of us no matter what comes upon the earth. It doesn't matter what the devil does. Amen. It does not matter what the devil does. Job said life is famine, lack of destruction. God looks at the devil's plans and just laughs at them. That's right. That's the way you and I should be. Instead of getting enthroned in how it looks. We should stay over here in the honor realm. Because honor is longevity. Mm. It is riches. You see, folks, God supplied the need before you ever had the need. Yes. Yes. Amen. The supply is already, your victory is waiting on your faith to catch up. Yes. I said, your victory yes. is waiting for your faith to catch up. Yes. So she tapped into the never go hungry anointing. Hmm. Then he brought up Elisha. That was Elijah. Jesus is still preaching. He said, there was many lepers in the day of Elisha. Yes. Nobody got healed but one. And he almost missed it. Did you know you'd be real close to your miracle, your breakthrough, and still miss it? Yes. You'd be sitting where the power of God is and still miss it? Mm -hmm. I can lay hands on you and the power of God can flow into you and you still miss it? What was their problem in Luke chapter 5? Well, who does he think he is? 
Attitude has a lot to do with God. Wow. Who does he think he is? Coming in here and saying you can forgive sin. Look forward. Who said, who is he? I know his brothers. I know his sisters. Familiarity. People get familiar hearing scripture. To the point they no longer pull the faith out of it. Mm. I know that faith message. <laughs> I bet you do. Yeah. We could scan it for a thousand years and never pull out all the riches that's there. Amen. But we get familiar with certain songs, certain churches, certain people, and we just familiar. See, they, familiar comes from the word <laughs> family. Family, familiar spirit comes from a spirit that's familiar with your family. And so they say, we know Joseph, his brothers, his sisters. I went to his carpenter shop and bought a coffee table. See, your mind will logically think and cheat you out of receiving. So back over here in Elisha, what happened to the leper, Naaman? Well, he had an attitude. He expected the man of God to come out on the porch and pray a great big Tarzan prayer. <laughs> and the man didn't even get up out of his lazy boy. He said his water boy said, go tell him to get George seven times. Made him mad. Did you know getting mad and upset is a lack of honor? Getting offended? See, he put on the screen a while ago, uh, uh, Mark 6, we'll go in a few minutes. He said, because the, the son could do nothing because of their unbelief. But what kind of unbelief? Familiarity is unbelief. Yeah. Putting up with familiar. Oh, dear God, she's going to sing again. I've heard her sing that song a hundred times. <laughs> oh, dear God, they have that Dale Begley in again. Familiarity, familiarity. You, you, have to, you have to watch that. So here Naaman just knew because he's a general, he's a commander in chief of the army. He's going to make over him and pray a great big Tarzan prayer. What? Go dip. Listen to this thing. We have clean rivers in New Brunswick. Clean rivers where I live. See, when people live in a certain place, they tend to gauge God from where they live. I've heard a thousand times there's just not no good churches in our area. Uh, no, that may be something wrong with you. Yeah. Come on. Huh? Yeah. But see, they got familiar with local churches, found fault for lack of honor. There's nobody on the planet that's faultless except me and Pastor Bailey, and I know him too well. <laughs> so there you are. <laughs> but honor looks beyond the faults and still honors. Yes. And so Naaman said, go dip in Jordan. No, no, no. Our church does not believe in dipping. We are non-dippers. My daddy was a non-dipper. My grandpa was a non-dipper. And I'm not about to dip. <laughs> Seven times. It took seven times to bring to a point of humility. To honor, first, you have to humble yourself. And oftentimes, a lack of honor is a lack of humility. Well, I'm just as good as he is. Well, Miriam said to Moses, you know the only one God can use? And she checked. She's eating with leprosy. You see, it opens the door to the enemy. Now, let's jump over to Mark chapter 6, verse 1. And the Lord came from thence. And we just figure out where thence is. <laughs> this is between here and Montreal, probably. Thence. <laughs> and he went out from thence. Actually, he just raised Jairus, his daughter, from the dead. Would you say that is a great work? Yeah. Absolutely. He raised Jairus from the dead. Now, he's headed to his hometown. If you want to do good anywhere, you want to do good in your hometown. Yeah. But they were 
you're familiar with him. Bingo. His disciples went with him. They, the town crowd had already heard of his miracles. Luke 5, they saw, he said, he, he, he speaks gracious words. Luke 4 said, we know him. And all these scenarios is a lack of honor. It's disguised as reasonable. How can you say you heal when you still got rash on your leg? Because the Bible says you heal. See, faith needs nothing except what God says about it. It needs no essential evidence. Somebody say amen. 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 He went from there and lives in his own country. Go to verse 5, please, for time's sake. And there he could not do any mighty works. Didn't say he wouldn't, said he couldn't. People are delusional when they think God's going to do what he's going to do regardless of what they do. If that was true, prayer wouldn't be necessary. Right. How would you pray? Oh, God, you're going to do whatever you're going to do regardless of what I do, so just go ahead and do. No, it takes your cooperation. Mm -hmm. It takes us flowing as one together. Mm -hmm. Honor is a high flow. A high flow. I'll get to it just one. He could, could there do no mighty works. He said, let's handle a few sick folks and he Let's just say he got 10% of small stuff done. Just 10 No cancers, no fatal diseases, just a little bit of flu, headache, nosebleed, few minor. Why? Because honor is the gauge that allows the power to flow. Somewhere in this building, there's a fuse box. It's put there not to make it hard. It's to regulate the power. Honor is the regulator. <laughs> the way people treat the guest speaker, the way people treat the pastor, enables God to flow. They want to blame. I had that preacher lay hands on me, I didn't get nothing. Just a little grease on my head. Well, don't blame me. It's your grease. Lack of honor, the power won't flow. That's good, yeah. So he just got a few people. I want to tell you about Chronicles chapter, I believe, 9. I'm just going to quote this. A lady named the Queen of Sheba. Queen of Sheba. Very wealthy woman went to see Solomon for answers. How many know we have a book that has answers in it? Amen. How many know you need an apostle or a prophet or a evangelist or a pastor or a teacher to help you understand the book? Amen. It's like trying to go to school without no teachers. You wouldn't learn much. Different ministries is Christ in that minister unveiling himself to you. Amen. I'm talking about true prophets and true pastors. Amen. So she spends two years on a journey. Two years. If you're going to walk in the fullness of God, it's going to put you out. It's going to cause some sacrifice. Not to earn it. Not to earn it, but to qualify. Paul said in his writings, he said, if I don't strike my flesh, I will disqualify myself. So all y'all need is a good spanking. <laughs> Two years. She spent six months. He answered every hard question she had. And I want to shock y'all. I have spent a quarter of a million dollars in 52 years going to camp meetings and camp meetings and camp meetings and camp meetings. I have heard the best on the planet. Bar none, I've heard the best on the planet. Why? Because iron sharpens iron. Why would a preacher need to go to camp meeting. Same way you need to hear and sit under it. You humble yourself sitting under the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. You know how many people they think they don't need the fivefold? Yeah. They don't need Christ then. Because the fivefold is Christ living amongst us. Right. Amen. So God sent you a gift this week. At least unwrap it. <laughs> huh? There's a gift living amongst you. We should honor him. Amen. Yes. Amen. What's wrong with so many people? And they're, they're cheating them. 
his animals? It's so cause they saw a flaw. They saw something and they got offended. Mm -hmm. Nobody's flesh is perfect. So God looks and monitors the heart. So should you. You should know no man after the flesh. But if you walk in the spirit, you know through and by the spirit. Here, Queen of Sheba wrote approximately 20 tons of gold. Now that's not jump change. 20 tons of gold. It took her two years with an entourage, warriors, swordsmen, men with arrows to protect the treasure. She brought the finest spices, the finest Finish lumber. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. I travel for 52 years. And churches try to buy the least, the cheapest carpet. Put you in the cheapest motel. There's no reward in heaven for saving God money. Ah. <laughs> And he's going to build a church and said, well, it's going to cost $100,000 more. And we thought, I don't care. Build the church. Amen. Money's not the issue. Money is never the problem. It's always a lack of honor. Always. So, she brought tremendous wealth. Did he need it? That is it. Honor offering. Most of our church world is based on need giving and not honor giving. Honor giving brings a flow of wisdom to you. A priceless flow of wisdom that money can't buy. So the Lord said, I'm not a millionaire. I said, Lord, I'm already a millionaire. He said, I'm a give off the millionaire. I said, good for you. <laughs> now, I don't mean I have a million in cash, but we have resources. We have offices. We have houses. We have, house, we have, we have land that, that we, that's on our, our, our headquarters. <sighs> have you ever missed God? Anybody ever missed God? Oh, yeah. Some of you missed him right now. <laughs> a few years ago, he told me, buy all the land you can buy in the Tokyo <laughs> County. I didn't think I could. You have to be careful who you're around. Yes. Yes. I turned down some land for four hundred dollars an acre. Cause I, I listened to my neighbor and he said, Well, you know, things are getting tough. Yeah. I could have bought it on time and they carry the note. But you know things ooh, jump forward ten years. Oklahoma passed a law that for medical marijuana. And so now land jumped from four to five hundred to seven hundred to fifteen thousand an acre. Wow. Because marijuana came in and Rilo McIntyre uh, opened a restaurant. I mean, how can you meet with, with, with a, a, a singer and a dope and a dope pack? How can you beat that? I'm just kidding, I'm flattening. <laughs> See, God knew the future. I didn't. And so my mentality trying to figure out. Yeah. But he knows. Yeah. They saw him and they tried to figure out. Your biggest enemy is your unrenewed mind. That's right. That will argue with your spirit. Oh. Now, now, I'm using this for a demonstration. He said that a demonstration of the spirit. He told me this morning that there's a person here going to be healed of asthma, of asthma this morning. So don't let me forget. And so, but see, he knows the future. You and I don't know the future. The future looks very uncertain, but he's not nervous. You shouldn't be either. Somebody say amen. 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 And so if we'll jump from, from the need 
conscious giving to the honor conscious giving. In the meeting in Fallon, Canada, preached one service, and one man gave $10,000. Because God moved on. <coughs> I didn't receive the offering. The pastor did. No pull, no pressure. But God moved so mightily, he was so impressed with the move of the Spirit that he obeyed and honored God. Yeah. God has the resources. It takes honor to get it to us. Mm. Yeah. Honor draws it to you. See, she got up, Queen of Sheba, and traveled two years to get to him. The church world, by and large, don't even know they do it. They'll let children receive the offering. That should never happen. Children means it's inconsequential. You ought to have a deacon or an elder. This is a thing of quality and an honor to God. It's the first thing that caused the devil to murder. They're holy before the Lord. So I say amen. Amen. And so let's jump over to Timothy. Y'all get anything? Oh, yeah. If anybody leaves, please take your body with you. <laughs> Let's look at t Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. And, and so they let children take the offering. And, 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 don't get mad. I promise you won't get mad at me. I promise you won't get mad. I promise you won't get mad. So I go to this one church. Pastor pulls me aside and says, We have a half a million dollars in the bank. Said, That's great. He said, We've got another million point two coming in just a few days. That'll be a million and a half dollars. I have went there for five years. Four out of five years, I paid a long way. In other words, we didn't take in enough to, to meet the budget. See, I don't get excited if something don't come in today. Because he's the rock of ages. Come on. Uh, come on, somebody. Amen. Don't get your eyes on people. With faith, you need to learn something. I, I'm, speaking, I'm speaking with great volumes here. With faith. Throw away your clock and throw away your calendar. Amen. Mm. It's not a time slot with God. Oh, right. And so this church had a had me in vain, me and four two coming. Last five years, only one year have we even missed budgets. So four years, me and my partners paid most of it. Okay. The next week after I'm gone, they have in a singing group. I'm not against singing group. They paid them seven thousand five hundred a night. That's about five hundred dollars a song. I can't count. So, what are they honoring? They're honoring more of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Don't make me say. <laughs> I'm so tired and so weary. Rusty and busted and disgusted. <laughs> and they just go crazy. Uh, they just slap it up like a fat and cold. You say, ooh. Uh. So, familiarity also will take you to what the flesh likes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we always have brisket on the phone Wednesday. Oh, that's the one night you show up. Not in this area, way up north. There you go. <laughs> you, have to, you have to watch what you get familiar with. Mm -hmm. You get familiar with your own spouse. Get familiar with the Word. Get familiar with the Holy Ghost. He should have to tell you 19 times. So let's analyze the response. The response in Luke chapter 5 was snooty. Power was there. Power was there. It was there to heal everybody there. And nobody got it on. Luke chapter 4. Power was there. I'm anointed. I'm anointed right now. Didn't nobody get anything. What was the response? Negativity. Finding fault. Looking at the natural. Finally, Naaman dismissed his thinking and yielded. I'm going to drop this to you. The Lord's had me study on trances. In 1864, around the Civil War, Marie Millward Edder was born. She finished her to 1924. 
in her ministry, she was known as the trans lady. Yeah. People don't understand, but a trans is a higher cognate uh, relationship with God. It, you go somewhere. Have you ever wondered when you sleep, where do you go? <laughs> where, where do you go? Your senses are all shut down. Falling into a trance. Peter fell into a trance. Uh, Paul fell into at least two or three trances. Uh, it's a place of cognizance where God can just talk to you directly. Yes. In, in, in her experience, people would fall into trances yeah. and they were lost. And when they'd wake up, they'd be saved. Talking in tongues. Oftentimes, when they fell into a trance, Jesus would come visit them. They'd have dreams while they're in this trance state. In St. Louis, she was preaching. Stood up for three days. Thousands came by and took pictures. No, no body movement, no blinking. And when she came to, she came right back for you where she stopped. Never even missed a lick. I don't know how else to tell you. I was in Kinder, Louisiana, and I was laying hands on people. And they were falling on the power. He's falling on the power. And all of a sudden, boom, down I went. And something happened to me. Something's happened to me on the inside. I can't explain it. There's something gyrating that I've never had before. I'm a dreaming prophet. Three or four years ago, in a dream, Brother Hagen appeared in his dream and he said, Go to the fourth floor. I thought, Okay, what's the fourth floor? It took me two years to discover what the fourth floor was. The fourth floor is a level of skill and operation. To where you don't miss. You don't miss. It's a skill and operation. Sitting in the office this morning, I'm thinking I'm on the fourth floor. He said, You're just now on the second floor. Well, at least I'm going up. <laughs> and so there's something happening. I can't explain it. There's something happening on the inside of me. Glory. God is preparing his people for the greatest revival the world has ever seen. We won't be moved by power, by fame, by money. We have to pass the test. There is a price to walk in the fullness. It's called flesh. In her meetings, it's recorded. People fell in trenches 10 miles, 20 miles. 30 miles, as high as 50 miles away. Can you imagine? We're going to learn some things, baby. Something flowing out of you. When the woman issue of blood touched Jesus, virtue went out of him. Yeah, but that was Jesus. You're supposed to operate the same way and greater. Yeah. So it's going to flow through you by God's design. God wants to do it, but he's going to do it through you. See, he's a spirit. Whatever flows from him flows through your spirit, out of your spirit to other people. Amen. This is real deep, but you listen real hard, you'll get this. The water that comes out of a water hose is not for the hose. <laughs> it's to flow through you. So up to 50 miles away, people were healed. The Lord said, that's coming back. That's coming back. That's coming back. So out of this church, you flow the power onto the highway, to the restaurants. you got to preach it, to believe it, to receive it. There will be meetings. It's already happening. The word of the cloud will come in. I've already seen some, just, just a little lab, mm -hmm. but it's going to increase. And when it comes to fullness, everybody in the house will be saved, oh, everybody will be healed, mm -hmm. and everybody will be delivered. Mm -hmm. Well, you think I'm going to quit now? 
We're on the verge of the greatest revival oh, the Lord. world's ever seen. Oh, and at the very same time, you see people falling away mm. because the draw of the world, the draw of the mental realm, they've gotten frustrated. Yeah. Well, what's taking so long? Well, it's not on God's part. He wants us to hasten His coming, yeah. to hurry up and get on the stick and get this job done. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Here in Timothy 5, 70, honor has to be practiced. Mm. Peter said, show honor to all men. You don't show honor to men because they're honorable. You show honor to people because God is honorable. Yes. God has always treated everybody with honor. Mm. Always. Yes. He's the epitome of honor. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double, double, double. Everybody say double. double. My father in the faith, I used to get tickled on Raymond Day because I knew what was coming. On Raymond Day, he said, Raymond Day means double up. Double up. Double up. Double up. We should show ministries that are true <coughs> ministries double honor. Yeah. You know, I didn't write this. You know, I didn't write this. That is a word from God for you to start practicing. <laughs> Double honor. Especially if you labor in the word and doctrine. Verse, verse 18. Now this part kind of buggeth me. Verse 18. Yeah. 18 buggeth me. He called me an ox. <laughs> but I was just, it's a metaphor. The ox that treads out the corn, this laboring, you ought to double honor him. He's worthy. Amen. Amen. Let me say this. I have lived long enough. God help us. I have seen me, I've seen him send me to a church to preach faith. Because the pastor is going to die if you don't get faith in him. And they don't honor the word enough to take it in. So they die at 52 years old. He sent me to other churches to get the word of faith in them. Pastor winds up with stomach cancer. Okay. In his 50s, he doesn't take the word of faith. What is God, what is God doing? Why don't God just heal him? God's doing the best he can to get faith to him. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4, the gospel was preached unto them. It did not profit them not being mixed with faith. He was trying to get faith to them because he knew this trouble was coming. God is trying to get faith to you. The way you'll be supernaturally blessed, so abundantly, whatever comes on the earth won't even phase you. I thought that was good. Yeah. And we're going to have to practice it and practice it. Let us get off of just the need. The need. Because the need was taken care of before the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. But let me start sowing in honor. This is where I'm going. I'm going to be the best sower. He provides seed to the greedy. No. No. He provides seed to the needy. No. He, he provides seed to the grouchy. No. <laughs> See, honor never complains, never gets offended. Amen. If you're looking for a perfect church, be sure you don't go there because you will surely mess it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Double honor. Double. Double. And we say double. 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 It's too late to fumble. It's too late. The quarterback throws the football, not to where the receiver is, but where the receiver should be. 
right? You Lucifer is headed to where you should be. Wow. 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 Well, if you're not there, then you miss out on what God had prepared. First final closing. God has a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. You ought to honor that plan and walk in it. Yes. I would have been satisfied. She's been an Oklahoma cowboy, rancher. Shoot my gun and chase my cows and spit my tobacco. To <laughs> <laughs> be a real cowboy, you gotta have a chaw. <laughs> now, come on, somebody. I've been satisfied. No, no. Old Roberts wanted to be governor of Oklahoma. <laughs> And God said, no, go this way. Every man has his own plans. But God's will is for you to be the happiest, the most content, mm -hmm. the most secure, mm -hmm. and the most blessed. Yeah. That's where we're going. If you believe it, say amen. 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 Shoo, give the Lord a shout. Y'all get anything this morning? Yes. If you have any asthma, asthma, he said, I want to heal a person with asthma. If that's you, you come. I was in Mountain Grove this here recently, Calvary Temple. I've been preaching there for almost 40 years, every year. This Sunday morning, he said, I want to fill people with, with arthritis. I think it was 10 or 15 people healed with arthritis. The pastor's wife got healed. If we learn to cooperate this morning as I was praying, he didn't say he didn't say heart trouble. He didn't say cancer. He said arthritis. So what should we pray for this morning? Arthritis. God seemingly has specialties. If, 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 if you need a tooth pulled, do not go to a gynecologist. <laughs> if, you, if you need a plumber in your house, don't get an electrician. You love to get a shot when you go to the throne. <laughs> God is a specialist. He knows what he's doing. You've been having trouble with that, right? I mean, uh, Ezra? Yes. Let me see what's wrong. You have a hole in your lung about the size of a half a dollar, your left lung. <laughs> it's filled up with fluid. It stays filled up almost all the time. Sometimes you have a little gurgling sound <coughs> down in your lung. Father, in the name of their, their leader, their leader, their leader. Oh, shh, shh, shh. No. Let it go, 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 let it go. Let it go. No. No. The Lord said to me, and I want to I wanna help you all this week. He said, tell the people, if falling on the power is real, if falling on the power is real, then learn to yield. The reason I fell on the power <laughs> in Kendra, Louisiana, I become a better yielder. <laughs> I become a better yielder. <laughs> you don't have no backup. <laughs> in Jesus' name, every foul hindering force. Ha ha. There it is, there it is, there it is. There it is. You've also had sinus infection. There it is. There's the healing power. You can go home in the top of your healing. <laughs> Thank you, Father. He said, as they yield better, I'm in rural Texas. The Lord just dealt with me on, on trances. We had two people, so let's do it carefully, but two or three people fall on the power, one of them on the power, while he's on the power, Jesus visited them. I tell you, I'm all excited. <coughs> it's a state of... Have you, ever, have you ever been daydreaming? While you're daydreaming, it seems like your, your, your senses are suspended. It, it takes something to pull you back over into the, into the feeling, touching realm. Well, that's a little bit like going to a trance. In a trance, your, your, 
you're, you're more aware of spiritual. See, Paul's eyes were shut. The people around him heard a voice but saw no man. He was so strong, the trance was so strong, people around him was affected. See, when we get so full, people around us will be affected by what we carry. How do you understand that? And so the Lord said, I want you to teach about people. Just put it out there. If falling on the power is real, you'll take advantage of it. Because all the time he wants to take you further. But, you know, we're, we're concerned about our hair. <laughs> our weave might fall off. What will people think? And so the other one, uh, while he was on the power, had a vision. About going home to his church and what to do. You can get revelation knowledge. When Paul was under in a trance, God said, or Jesus said, go to Rome. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go to Rome. So you get instructions. I'm, I'm telling you, we're not taking advantage of the full extent of what the power of God is for. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Amen. And so this week, we're going to have a time. We're going to have a time. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the rough off the place. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let me speak one more time with the Spirit. The flesh, the flesh, the flesh. So you can be a blessing to the human race. I want your face to shine with the glory as you live out the gospel story. Your face shall shine because you're born of the divine. And the supply shall be sublime. The best the best I've saved for the final test. I've chosen you to live in this time. So walk as the God can. The wealthy place, I'm taking you to the wealthy place so I can share the abundance of grace. I'm taking you to the safe place where Satan can't get to you. The safe place. The safe place, the wealthy place, the secret place. The secret place is where I can share my secrets. Oh, you love that place. Because revelation flow unhindered. So now is the time to be filled with the divine. In God. Amen. Now that right there was right off the heart of God. God just spoke to us. Somebody ought to get up and do it to <laughs> That's my mature jig. I used to love to move. <laughs> Time's gone by. Y'all give you thanks for me. <coughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, anyone else in prayer? If, you, if you're not just busting at the scene for prayer, I'd rather you to wait because you're going to get some good stuff this week. Child. Yes. Uh, child. Your child. Charles? Charles, who's Charles? Charles, get up here. Glory. Charles, what's been trying to bother you? Oh, I believe it would be a big bad worm. What do you think? I'm not sure. She thinks she fucked up. Father, in the name of Jesus, by word of knowledge, word of knowledge flips the gifts of healing. In the manifestation. Thank you, Father, for triggering the gift of healing. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce him healed and well from the top of his head, the soles of his feet, in Jesus' name. And, and, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Go home and eat a taco, brother. Glory. Thank you, Father. Anyone else do prayer for quickly? I, I, I'd rather wait because there's greater things coming this week, a greater flow. Yeah. You're going to see different flows this week. Right, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if it's all right with everybody, let's just take a great big love offering, an honor, honor offering. Amen. Amen. Learn to start giving out of honor. Listen to me carefully. We are so trained. Preachers are so trained. Well, we got a pothole in the parking lot, or we got a rook, and that's, that, 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 that has its place. But we want to go beyond that. We want to go to a place of honor giving. Is that all right with everybody? Yeah. Amen. Well, there's no better time than now. Jesus always said now. Everybody say now. Now. now.
Praise the Lord. Go on, make your mother-in-law a pie. This time, leave the rat poison out of it. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. Like that Sunday morning. <laughs> your mother-in-law ought to hear you talking tongues a lot. <laughs> Father, we laid open what you gave us from our hearts. We're, we we want to please you. That's, that, that's our greatest desire. We want to honor you tonight, today, by honoring the gift that you sent. Mm -hmm. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just lay our heart before you. All that we have is yours, and we thank you that we're privileged mm -hmm. in this country to be blessed. We are blessed beyond measure. Yes. Blessed beyond measure. In Jesus' name, we share our blessing. In the name of the Lord. And everybody said amen. Amen. Well, make the church, uh, check out to the church. If they don't give you anything, kick them in the knee. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. Laugh at the Sunday morning. Thank Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Y'all need to sing something? Y'all need to do something? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Make sure you through. Well... Do yourself a favor. Don't miss the service. Don't miss the service. I don't care if you have to tie your kids up and put them in the backyard. Come on to church. Amen. You know, it's amazing. People actually do what they want to do. They want to do it bad enough. Yep. Out, of tw out of 36 camp meetings, I went to 32 for the Hagen's camp meeting. It always amazed me. People sitting out there in the foyer eating hot dogs while they're in there preaching. I thought, you can eat anytime. Yeah. Valuable words are coming. And you're in there eating hot dogs? Yeah. I took one preacher with me, paid his way. He went to one service and said, I got it. You ready to go home? You never have full faith by hearing it once. That's right. You got to hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I prophesied to my daughter. Y'all met my daughter. Yeah. She's good looking like her daddy. <laughs> My favorite. And uh, I told her 30 years ago, 30 years ago, go ahead and step out. Go ahead. What are you saying? Go ahead and step out. And obey the Lord. Obey the Holy Ghost. And she just now does it. Yeah. But see, we ain't done another 30 years. That's right. We've got to get this job done. Yeah. Amen. How many of you see the two kingdoms are clashing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The devil ain't even trying to hide it no more. No. He's trying to hide it. Big time. And so we got to be the light and the salt. Yes. Well, give uh, the brother whoever is taking over. <laughs> I appreciate you, Pastor. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. All right. All right. Well, are you ready for tonight? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be awesome again tonight. Just It just grows and goes and the fire's been lit and it's gonna get to greater, bigger, better. Yes. Come expecting, bring somebody with you. Amen? Yes. Alright, God bless. Thank you so much for coming. Thank we will you. see you tonight. Yes.